Today I'm going to show you the books I bought for my birthday. And I'm also going to talk about why I need to stop buying books for a while. As many of you know, I usually buy a lot of thrifted books, but to celebrate properly this year, I decided to buy some new books. And that means that this book haul will probably be the best book haul to showcase what books I really want to read. So let's just begin. And if you think that I have a little bit more energy than I usually have, it's just because I've been drinking too much coffee today. Nevertheless, the first book is Kalak by Kim Leine. He is a Norwegian Danish author and he was brought up in the Jehovah's Witnesses. And then he ran away from home and he started drinking alcohol and he went on to drug addiction. Summed up in this first book of his, he talks about his life so far. And I've watched a lot of interviews with this author just because I find him very, very fascinating. I don't think I will try to explain but I really am looking forward to reading this book. As I've talked about numerous times, I try to find funny books all the time. And this time I really think I struck gold in Arthur Pasalina and the Year of the Hare. I think this book is about a person that drives over a hare and then befriends it. That's basically what I think of it. It's a short book, so I will soon enough know. But the reason why I bought this book is because I bought this book. Collective Suicide. Since I started this YouTube channel, I have gotten a lot of comments about my dark sense of humor. And that's why I think this book will be perfect for me. So the author is Finnish and the Finns are the happiest people on earth these days. And some might say that that's because of low expectations and a dark sense of humor. I think that's the reason at least. Also, they have a lot of money and welfare systems, but but when I first read the description for this book, I thought that this book and me was made for each other. The book is about this one guy going out to commit suicide and then he meets this other guy also out to commit suicide. They start drinking and decide to throw a seminar where they invite a lot of other suicide candidates and they decide to commit a collective suicide. And then starts the journey on the death bus. I just think this will be the book for me. And I will be so happy if I find a new author I really enjoy. Then I was contacted by a publisher called Samlage. And they asked me if I would be interested in reading this book by Sigil Sambag. I recently read An Ode to Darkness. Or recently I read An Ode to Darkness some months ago and really enjoyed it. The book is called Ru or Row as in rowing. This book is about the author herself rowing on Sognefjorden, which is the world's longest fjord, or at least Norway's longest fjord, with over 200 kilometers. And I grew up in this place, so I will probably like reading about it. Here you can see some gorgeous pictures taken for the book. And I really love the cover. Also, I like the Ode to Darkness, so I believe there is something I would enjoy in this one as well. The next book is Anxious People by Fredrik Bachmann, his latest release about people taken hostage at a showing of an apartment. I do think this will be a lot more weirder than the previous books I've read, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'll probably like it anyway. When I was asked what I wanted for my birthday, I said books. They asked me to be more specific, then I told them I wanted these two next books I'm going to show you. And then they said, we'll give you money. So I took the money and I went out and bought these two books. The first two books in the Septology series from Jon Fosse. You probably know more about these books than I do. I've only read the trilogy from before. And these are said to be in the same universe as the trilogy. Uh, a couple of the names are recognizable for me at least. I've spent some time since last time I read him to figure out what is the great thing about Jon Fosse because I sometimes struggle to understand the genius. I now know some of the things that are characteristic for his authorship and I'm going to try to read these books with new glasses. I think Jon Fosse is maybe the author I feel obliged to read more books from. Unfortunately, he did not win the Booker Prize this year. He was nominated for the last book in this series. But I'm still looking very much forward to reading these books. The next book I've actually avoided for a while and it's Roskilde by Lim Strömsborg. 
So Roskilde is a festival in Denmark. Going to festivals was basically the only thing I did when I was on vacation and then came the pandemic. So I have not been wanting to read this book because I thought it would be emotionally damaging to read it in just one week. I'm going to be at a festival and I think that will be the perfect time to read about a festival because then I'm right in the middle of it. In this book they go through each day of the festival and it's said to be really great. I do think I would have loved any book about a festival but especially now that I can go to festivals once again. The only sad thing is that I have two festivals that I usually always go to and one of them is always colliding with the Roskilde festival so I won't go to Roskilde for a long long time I assume. My dream of course is that I could decide when each of the festivals would be arranged but I don't have the power just yet. The next book is Thomas Espedal and Against Art. Thomas Espedal is an author I had never heard about until I went on YouTube and started making videos myself and discovered that Thomas Espedal is a very highly critically acclaimed author in many countries, but he does not sell that many books, not compared to how he is writing apparently. So that is something that intrigues me quite a lot. And this book is about a boy who wants to become an author. As you all know, I don't especially like books for the language itself, but rather what happens in it. So he might not be an author for me, but then again, small, small books, I will quickly decide if he is. Nevertheless, funny to discover that we have some authors that might sell more books outside of Norway than inside. And that is not a fact, that is not something I know, it's just a feeling. Sometimes when I buy books, I bulk buy books to get an extra discount, and sometimes I'm missing one book to get the complete discount. And in this case, this is the book I landed on. It's Asti Lingen with her war diaries from 1939 to 1945. She's a very famous children's novel author and I did not know that this book existed before I went on my shopping spree. But reading about Second World War is of course a very interesting topic and I think this book will either be a book that I can't live without or a book that I find mildly boring. It's illustrated and there's a lot of news clippings. I think I will really enjoy this book. I talked about in my previous video also that the historical fiction aspect I really enjoy. Of course this is not fiction but the historic part is the part of why I love historical fiction. I'm just going to stop talking now. Or will I? Probably not. The next book is a book that it's hard to describe. It's by Sigrid Solund and it's called Haschketekniker. Haschketekniker is a word that I don't believe exists in the English language. I think many people try to translate it to master suppression techniques. It's about the things you do to suppress other people. I guess when you talk to them, you might do hand gestures or you might patronize them. There are many things you do Maybe you know about them or you don't know about them, but when you talk to other people you might try to get your point across in a fashion that's not very sexy. So in this book you basically go through a whole lot of scenarios where you describe situations where people use techniques they shouldn't or you get to know techniques you could use if you want to play dirty in a debate or some sorts. The author is a Norwegian political journalist and she does a lot of political debates and it is very interesting to see how she deals with people not paying attention to the rules of the debate or anything along those lines. I think this book goes through it all, all from sexual harassment to playing a martyr to not answering questions. So I'm looking forward to learning something about myself because I'm pretty sure that we all have these techniques we use without even thinking about it, unfortunately. Then over to the author I think I have the most books from in my shelves that I haven't read and it's Murakami. The first one is Kafka on the Shore, a book I think will be too confusing for me to read right now, but in a while probably I will read it and understand it, hopefully. Then we have Norwegian Wood, which is the book everyone tells me I will love and I just have to believe people. I think at least this will be the book I will be reading first, because it seems simple to understand. And after reading what I talk about when I talk about running, 
I do believe I will enjoy the way he writes. Then over to a book that I bought for the appearance, not just the cover, but also what it's trying to tell you about me. And this is a book written in the 11th century about Norway and Iceland and how things were written in this form. I don't know what this form of writing is called, but I do not know if I'll understand anything about most of this book. But if I understand it, I am hopefully getting a new insight into how it has become the way it has become around here. I don't mind this just sitting in my shelf also, because that's how shallow I am. So, and shallow too, it's Hamlet by Shakespeare. I do believe that this is going to be understandable and people say that this is an easy piece of literature and I need to say at some point that I've read Shakespeare, so this is my attempt. Also, it's written in Norwegian Nynorsk and translated by Edvard Huem, which is a famous Norwegian author, so that's pretty much why I chose this edition. And since I'm already in the nostalgic mood, I bought Osman Olesson Vinje and travel memories from in summer in 1860. This is about the author's travels through Norway and in this particular summer and he describes what he sees both in lyrics and in letters and it's said to be a surprisingly not dull book. Which is a surprise if it's not. I, this has been on my radar for quite some time so this I'm looking forward to especially. Then we have come to the last segment in this birthday book haul and it's three winners of the Nordic Council Prize for Literature Award. So these have all won that award within the last 10 years. The first one is Days in the History of Silence by Mariette Lindström. I do not know exactly what this book is about, but it has won and I one day decided that I should read more of the winners in this prize. I believe it's the biggest prize in the Nordics. I might be wrong, but that is my feeling. Not counting the Nobel Prize for Literature, of course. The next one is called The Wednesday Club and it's by Kjell Wester. And this is called Svik 1938, which is directly translated to Betrayal 1938. So this one is related to the Second World War, without me knowing why the English title is so different. Also in the category of why is the title so different, it's Hotel Silence or Ar, which is directly translated to Scar. And it's by Eudur Ava Olafsdottir. And she is an author I've thought about reading a whole lot. So she has many books that I want to be reading. And so that's why I think this one is the first one of these books I will be reading. I thought maybe I would do a video where I talk about this year's nominees for the Nordic Council Prize for Literature Award. It's a very difficult title, I think, but that will come not far into the future. And I will also be trying to read some of the nominees for this year's prize. So I'm looking forward to having one of those projects again. Earlier, I read some of the Booker Prize books and I really enjoyed having sort of that kind of project to do. So this will be fun. So that were all the books for this birthday book haul and I talked earlier in this video about what I should do in the future regarding buying books. I have decided not to buying books in June, July and August. I have a lot of books I haven't read of course, which you all know. Also my birthday was in May so I haven't bought any books so far in June and I'm really enjoying it. I often feel bad when I bought too many books and not read them. So this will be an opportunity to feel better about my own shelves. Because it doesn't feel good when you're only buying new books. It feels good for a second and then not. I do not think that this will be difficult just because it's only three months. And I will be satisfied when I have more shelf space to put these books in because none of the books I've bought in May will fit my shelves now. So for each book I read and that goes into my shelf behind me, the more space I will have in my other shelves. So life will be good. This also means that I'm not walking into any thrift stores or into any shopping malls, which will save me quite a lot of time that I could spend reading. And that's also a good thing. So that is basically the message of this video. So buying a lot of books for your birthday, it's a good thing. 
and then not buying so many books afterwards also a good thing so things are good did you see any books that you want to be reading yourself please come below and give this video a like if you want to and subscribe if you're not subscribed and i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching bye